Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Today we have a very, very spicy video to talk about. I wasn't really sure how this week was going to go down. Obviously, I know we have some storylines to talk about from this past weekend, but with no LCS, no LEC games coming up in this next week, I was worried, hey, is there going to be as much news? Is there going to be as many storylines? Is there going to be enough stuff to talk about? Uh, but so far, this week is absolutely delivering. I am having so much trouble deciding what videos to talk about and what to post right now because there's so many good things. So I hope you guys are excited for this week because uh, this might be one of my best weeks in a while in terms of video content overall coming out. So hopefully you guys are excited for that. What we're talking about today is the uh, rumored potential removal of the uh, import rule or at least maybe a, a tweak or a change to the import rule. I know we've kind of been talking about this for the past couple of years, it seems like. Um, but again, these rumors are swirling around. It seems like we might be getting closer and closer um, to TSM Reginald's dream of imports, imports, imports all over uh, not only North America, but some other regions in the world as well. And this could be a very, very big story that could really impact a ton of careers, a ton of teams, a ton of rosters, uh, and could absolutely, absolutely have a big impact on this upcoming 2023 offseason. So let's just get right into this. Uh, this, I guess, story comes from uh, Inside on Esports, uh, Monte Cristo and Thorin, their podcast or video series or whatever, Summoning Insight. Uh, their episode that they did about a week ago, and I, I, it's kind of interesting that this news is just popping up now. Uh, I mean, overall, this podcast is pretty popular, 43,000 views, and that's just, uh, you know, the video VOD. I'm pretty sure they live stream it as well, but, uh, you know, this video is called What Did Excel Learn from T1 and RNG in the Korean Boot Camp? Summoning Insight, Season 5, Episode 17, featuring Nelson. Uh, 36 minutes in when they're talking about LCS branding. That is where we get this. This was posted on Reddit. We'll go over to the Reddit thread and stuff in a second as well. Um, but here is what... Uh, these guys have to say. Uh, let me turn this up a little bit before we get into it. And let's see what they have to say, and then we can react. So that proves the rule. You are so, aware of that principle. So right? you you are going to be highly disappointed. So here's my informed theory. Let's put it that way. You guys can read into that euphemism. I think Riot is going to open up all minor regions at the end of this year uh, to become residents of any major region so right now so that is a bomb that monte cristo drops on us he doesn't just say hey the import rule could be changing he doesn't just say oh minor regions are going to get opened up in the major region he says he believes that is coming next season he says it is his informed theory uh obviously hinting that this is a rumor that he has heard behind the scenes swirling around and uh this wouldn't be totally unprecedented obviously we already have this right now maybe some people think this seems crazy maybe pe some people think this seems believable whatever, Osh is already considered residents in North America. And that really doesn't make any sense. Yes, I get it. The Oceanic League took some major hits. Uh, you know, they lost a bunch of money funding. They were maybe going to have to close down, whatever. Oceania still has a professional league in their league right now. They still have representation at both MSI and Worlds. I really believe that there is not much reason uh, for Oceania to be considered residents in North America at this point. Um, maybe there's not as much support for that league as there once was and everything like that. But again, it's not like Oceania does not have a league. So they, those players need to come to North America. Like, no, they still have a league over there. Uh, but anyway, my point is this is not unprecedented. This is a very, very possible thing. And the fact that we could be opening up all minor regions to all major regions is a very, very big deal. Yes, this means a ton of Latin American players, uh, a ton of South American players, um, a ton of, uh, you know, those type of players coming to North America. It also means Turkish players are going to be a very, very hot commodity in this hypothetical world in both Europe and North America. Uh, it also means uh, like Taiwanese players uh, going to China, going to Korea, stuff like that. More so probably to China. Um, you know, really, really opening that up. Vietnamese players uh, potentially going to North America, Europe, China, maybe even Korea as well. Um, this could be a very, very big deal, um, but it also opens up a huge can of worms, a huge, um, you know, kind of Pandora's box that we won't be able to close after it happens. Once you start, uh, you know, eroding these import rules, it's really going to change the entire landscape of Global League of Legends, um, but it's also going to really take away a, a lot from what it even means uh, to be in these regional leagues, and I guess we'll talk about more of that in a second. But let's see, uh, you know, if Monte Cristo has anything else to say here. No, oh, obviously it's only like it's Oceania that like the Australian players can come over and play in LCS. I think they will open it up to the Brazilians, the Turkish league, the Japanese league. Japan I think too. that That's will probably, one. and obviously good if you guys there. are looking at this, uh, Taiwan probably as well. 
I think if you guys are looking at this, it, it will be obvious that this doesn't benefit anybody who isn't LCS because no other team, except for the Chinese teams, are only going to import Koreans. They're not going to import a Turkish guy, right? And, and I don't totally agree with Monte Cristo there. Like I said, um, you know, there'll, there'll definitely be some some EU players, uh, some some teams that go for some EU players. Also, China's not going to import Korea. Korea's not a minor region. Um, but but China definitely is going to be looking at, uh, I'm sure, Japanese, Taiwanese, uh, you know, those type of players. And there's definitely some Vietnamese players that could play in the LPL on some of the mid to lower tier teams. So, uh, yes, this would benefit the LCS a lot, um, but, uh, well, potentially would benefit the LCS a lot. What it will do is it will open up the LCS to a lot more cheap talent pool. And I think that's why a lot of these LCS owners um, want these uh, minor regions. They want to get these players who are not making very much money in the Brazilian league or in the, you know, whatever league, the Latin American league or whatever. And they want to be able to offer them slightly more or even significantly more to come over to North America, but be able to pay them less than European imports or Chinese imports or Korean imports or whatever. And maybe even less than North American resident players. Uh, and maybe they'll be just as good. Maybe they'll be a little bit worse. Even if they're worse, who cares? We're already not doing anything at international tournaments. Um, but overall, it'll be a way to cut costs uh, for a lot of these North American teams uh, and open up the player pools to a lot of them. You know, so many people say, oh, there's not enough American North American talent or, oh, North American talent sucks or yada, yada, yada. The imports are just better. Um, well, this solves, you know, cost issues and player pool issues in a lot of ways uh, for some LCS teams. Um, and and uh, there's also the argument, and somebody makes this argument in the Reddit thread we'll look at in a second as well, is this could potentially be a viewership boost for something like the LCS as well. If you start, if all, all of a sudden you have a couple Turkish players in the LCS, all of a sudden you have a couple Brazilian players or, um, you know, a couple whatever players uh, in the LCS, maybe you start to get some viewership from those different regions as well. Uh, maybe you get, you know, some more sponsorships, more numbers, all that stuff. Um, I don't know. Overall, obviously, I don't like this. I don't like this idea. I think it, it, there's a lot of negative sides and consequences to it. Um, but yeah. So... It only really benefits LCS in this particular instance, unless, I will say this, unless, and this could be good for viewership, it's possible that, let's say, a lower tier LEC team might field a mostly Turkish roster in order to cap, like, to start branding themselves as like a Turkish team and appealing to the audience of that region. But it certainly wouldn't surprise me if Immortals dumps their roster after this year, gets an entirely Brazilian roster, rebrands to MIBR, which they already own, and then brings a big influx of of Brazilian fans. It would be much better for the the company that runs them uh, to do something like that. So I don't think it's going to stop Thor. And the other reason why they're not going to be demoted to minor region status is as follows. Yeah, so they, they get into some talk about whether the LCS should get demoted to minor region status or, or not. I think it's just kind of a ridiculous argument, so I don't even want to talk about that too much. Um, but yes, the Reddit thread, they got very, very popular. According to Monte Cristo's informed theory, minor regions will no longer count as imports. Uh, very, very interesting. I will say on, on the you know fact of if uh, Immortals decides to go for like an all-Brazilian team, they rebrand MIBR, they try to go for a Brazilian fan base, could that pump up some numbers and could that be good for immortal social media? Media and all that stuff in some ways and jersey sales yeah sure it could we also have to remember um you know in terms of like the lcs and viewership and stuff in a lot of ways uh you know when you look at ad rates and and sponsorship spend and all this stuff uh, especially in a north american league where many of your sponsors are going to be north american english speaking english based and stuff uh those sponsors are going to pay a lot more for an american viewer or you know a canadian viewer or even an osh viewer or even a even a european viewer um depending on the the countries and everything then they are going going to pay for a Brazilian viewer or for, uh, you know, I don't even know, a Cuban viewer or whatever, like different countries and different places have different ad spend rates and they have different, you know, amounts of disposable incomes and all that stuff. Um, so yes, even though your raw numbers could go up, you still could be maybe not making as much money or losing money or, you know, who knows? There's definitely ways uh, how this all work out. Um, but either way, this is very, very interesting. And again, I don't necessarily like this change. I think it is bad in a lot of ways. I think it, uh, you know, you really risk, especially in the LCS, uh, our, our, amateur academy everything systems already suck um there's already almost uh, no reason for new young players to like be grinding solo queue be grinding amateur be grinding collegiate anything like that because there's really so many barriers and barricades to getting up to the lcs and uh, even when you do you still have bad coaches bad management there you you know you never really make it big 
we already are risking like the game kind of falling out of favor in North America as it is. The game's definitely, you know, not as hot as it once was. Viewership's not as high as it once was, all that stuff. And if you start bringing in even more imports, making it harder and harder for new young players to even get a chance in the LCS or even Academy, um, you really are, are risking pulling the base out of, of your whole North American system. And the base is, uh, you know, everything. The base is future players, future viewers, future fans, future, you know, people spending money on the game. And you pull that all out and you turn... Uh, uh, you know, North America into a Turkish, Brazilian, Osh region with no North American players already. Already, we're teetering on way too many imports. We're teetering on not even being a North American league anymore. Uh, and you're just going to open up the floodgates. And I really think, uh, you know, the, these greedy owners who think that this is the the solution or whatever, I think it is a very, very short term solution and long term could really. Uh, be a potential death sentence for the LCS. And I don't think it's going to make us better internationally. I don't think it's going to change viewership in a meaningful way. I think it's going to save the owners some money. Uh, and I think it's going to really hurt the product and eventually maybe lead to the downfall of the LCS. Uh, I think the LEC, the LCK, LPL overall won't be as affected or as changed. Maybe a couple teams, a couple players here and there. Um, but the LCS is really the, the the region where you know you would see a big influx of, of imports probably right away. Uh, and I don't necessarily love it. I know a person down here talks about how also it would you know, really kind of defeat the purpose of regional leagues if you start to have imports all over the place. You know, if you have a Turkish and a Brazilian and, uh, you know, in, in North America right now, we already have two full import teams in 100 Thieves and, and Team Liquid. And already that is, you know, 20 percent uh, or, or, yeah, one fifth of our teams are already fully imported and we might get even more like how are you even going to like right now? League of Legends is a bunch of regional leagues. And, you know, the winners go to the international tournaments. Like, why even keep it as regional leagues if uh, North America isn't even a North American league? And if the LEC doesn't even become a European league and China doesn't even become a Chinese league, um, you know, then we're just having like many international leagues all over the place. Then eventually kind of arbitrarily feeding into these international tournaments. There's so many things bad about this, but I know that there's obviously very, very big, very, very powerful North American owners who are, you know, applying a lot of pressure to Riot. Uh, and again, I, I feel like we've already kind of crossed the line with what's going on with Ocean North America right now. This was their way of testing it out. Things have gone pretty well. You know, Fudge, he's doing well. He's popular. There's some Osh players who are succeeding in North America, like FBI. Again, he's popular. People like him. Uh, and yeah, so I don't know. Coming this offseason, we might be seeing uh, this happening. And this could be a really, really big thing. I mean, look at like TSM. If Maple uh, was all of a sudden a resident player, that all that crazily changes TSM's roster building and TSM's offseason and all this stuff. Uh, and for so many teams, it could change their who they're looking at, how much money they're spending, what their future looks like. Um, and again, this isn't confirmed, just a rumor, just speculation. But Monte Cristo's informed theory says uh, that this might be coming as soon as this offseason next year. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. If you drop a like if you did enjoy it, I would appreciate that so, so much. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this story. Do you like this change? Hate this change? Do you think it's going to happen? Not happen? I don't know. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe, save up to date, and all my latest content. Hopefully, catch you guys in the next one. Uh, consider checking out the Discord. First link in the description below. Uh, but until then, peace.